Hey bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. Got myself an orange bike, which I always like. It's a Gary Fisher Mamba. It's got my sticker on it. I don't remember the story behind this one exactly, but it came back to me on trade at some point. It's got a little bird shit on the saddle. That means it was under my carport for a while and it's been sitting for a couple of seasons and I just haven't gotten around to it because this fork is shot. Now, I get a lot of comments. What, you don't check the suspension? It's, I do. If it still squishes, it's good. On most of the bikes I deal with, these are just cheapo suspension. It's not worth pulling them apart and servicing them or whatever. You just kind of replace them when they break. And so, you know, it's kind of expensive. The economics doesn't always work out. So I've had this one sitting and I was like, man, do I just replace it with a rigid? I mean, it's a steel bike, it's lower end. I don't know. I mean, it's already got the upright handlebars, a somewhat squishy seat. It'd make a great ATB kind of all around her with a rigid fork. But at the last minute, I decided I'd take this, replace Placement Sun Tour fork. This thing weighs about 4,000 pounds, but it's got a lockout on it and it's a large frame. But you know, there are some taller middle school kids that need bikes and you know, they want the shock on them for riding around. And you know, we've got some trails around here going through the woods that kids like to bomb through and it's just nice to have a fork on it. So I think it's going to sell quicker and easier and be more mountain bikey. The other thing is, is it's got these tires on it. They're kind of knobby. If I put a rigid fork on there, I'd be inclined to put on some semi slick tires and that's just another 30, 40 bucks that I don't make on this bike. And there's nothing wrong with these tires. So I'd like to keep these tires. And so it's a real judgment call. This frame is filthy. It's a bit of a project. Um, the one thing I do know is that since it's got my sticker on it, we've been through this once before. We've tuned this up before. It's at least had fresh lube put on the cables once. It makes a huge difference. It makes, I just kind of know that if I do run into problems, they're not going to be huge problems. They're going to be easy problems for me to solve. So I always like bringing bikes in that have my stickers on them because if it's had some maintenance in the past, it's a lot easier to work on in the future. All said, I don't see any reason to keep yapping. So kick back, relax, and let's get started. Okay, per the use, I like to click the little buttons on the shifters, get it in small and small. It's not, oh, there it goes. And then we'll pop the wheels off and set them aside. I don't know, what do you think about those? I think they need replacement, so we'll pop those off. So these front ones don't really look too bad, but I think since we're doing the rears, we'll do the fronts. Um, it's not uncommon for me to point out the replacement parts on a bike when I'm selling them. You know, and just say, hey, yeah, you know, you get brand new fork, new brake pads, new-ish tires. Um, you know, those are all things you won't have to worry about unless you ride a ton. You know, I really don't like these pedals a whole lot and I'm feeling this one, it's, it's really crunchy. Um, I have some cheapo, bigger platform pedals that I really think make a big difference on the bike. And I hardly paid anything for them. So we'll get rid of these. These are still decent. I'll give them to a charity, set them aside. Yeah, you can see this frame has some real grunge on it. I don't know what that is. Um, I'm gonna try some Dawn Power Wash here. It's kind of a secret weapon of mine. People that have watched the channel have known since the beginning. I don't know what this stuff is, but the Dawn Power Wash is a really nice degreaser. Um, so it's a nice place to start when you've got some mystery filth going. Doesn't seem to be taking off this black gunk. Let's 
just not coming off, is it? I can see that it's, you know, cleaning. It's just not removing the gunk. Hmm. Another one of my secret weapons is goof off. This stuff really stinks. Got a fan going. It's hot as balls outside, as they say. Yeah, see, goof off always works. Sometimes too well, so you have to be somewhat careful with it. I'm being pretty loosey-goosey right now. But yeah, nice and shiny now. Okay, so let's go find some more gunk. There's some gunk right here. Anytime you have uh, paint that's rubbed off onto the frame, like from parking the bike or I don't know, from being in a car accident, Goof Off will take off that paint too. You see that on forks a lot from bike racks. Here we are on the non-drive side. This head tube really got gunked with something. Oh, and there's a bunch under there too, or there was. Coming right off though. Wow. Yeah, that really improved the aesthetics of that bike. Cosmetically, it's a huge improvement. To get at the rest of the frame, I'm gonna disconnect the cables. Um, I have the wheels off, so the way I do that is I can just kind of pull that derailleur in like that, get that piece of housing out of its happy home, cable stop on the frame. And that gives me enough slack to get that piece too. So now this cable's undone. Now I'll show you the trick to the front. If you shift up, well, if it lets you, the shifter is, there we go. Gonna need a flushing, but to get it up in the big ring and then without pedaling, give your shifter two clicks down, that creates enough slack in the front derailleur cable that it too can be coerced out of its happy home. And now that one's loose too. And then while you're at it, give her the old reach around and disconnect the brake cable. These guys can come out of the front. And then you got yourself a god awful mess of whiskers here, right? But you don't have cables and housing all stuck to the side of your frame. So it makes it a lot easier to wipe the frame down. This bike had a little extra filth on it. You know, it'd been sitting outside. So I'm gonna do, the, I'm gonna do a two step process here. We'll start with the Dawn Power Wash. I just kind of hit everything. We just don't care a whole lot where it goes. And then we'll do our best to wipe it all off. Hey bike farmers, I just wanted to take this lull in the action to let you know how much I appreciate that you've clicked in to watch this video. Now that I've been at it a little bit, I'm starting to learn why everybody's always asking for more. The AdSense money is just barely enough to make it worth starting a channel. If I want to sustain this for the long term, I'm going to need everyone's help. Now don't get me wrong, your attention is enough. Don't feel obligated to give more, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. You can always click the super thanks, that's the heart with the dollar sign in the middle of it, or consider a monthly membership. The monthly membership will give you a little star next to your name, and if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments, I'll see the star, and when I see it, I'll definitely give you an answer. You'll also have access to a little more behind the scenes action that non-members can't see. With all that said, thank you so much and let's get back to some bikes. All right, now when we get to that point, I use the Behold Furniture Polish. This uh, is a gentle cleaner and it also leaves behind a little bit of a polished waxy shine. makes for an excellent bicycle polish. All 
All right, get started on replacing this fork. And get rid of these brakes first. Work smarter, not harder. Oh, drop some spacers. All right, you can see here on the old fork, the old bearings, everything's kind of nasty. But we can clean those up, we'll regrease. So we're gonna have to pop this. There's a, the, that's the seal. And then we'll have to pop this race off this fork and put it on the new one. Take a closer look at the top part of the headset here. So the race inside here looks pretty good yet. That's good. And uh, these bearings still have grease on them and yeah, no, no alarms there. We can clean that up before putting it back together. Nice little headset overhaul too. Might as well, right? So sometimes you can just pound the races off. But I also have this tool. You can pound the races off if you can get at like every 15 degrees or something like that. And you just kind of go around and go tink, 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 and just keep going around it. But this one, I could only catch a lip on one side of it. And I just knew it would become problematic. So I have this tool, like a little wedgie mo -bedgy, we'll call it. I'm just gonna get to get it started. Hopefully I'm able to zoom into this a little bit for you so you can see what I'm doing trying to show you but if you get it started in the right spot then you can try to get these going without the other side turning grab your adjustable hold it on one side seems to be coming off relatively freely here There we go. Nasty crown race. And it's a dead old fork. Yeah. So I'm gonna start with some Ecotech. This stuff, you know, does a really good job of degreasing and it isn't as nasty as like the Speed Clean or some of the other degreasers you'll see me use. This, this seems to work pretty well for this sort of thing. And then I'll just take a little cleaning brush and agitate things a bit. Now I have an ultrasonic cleaner and I could put all this stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner for a while and blah, 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 but sometimes it's faster to just do this. I like the ultrasonic cleaner for things like derailleurs or shifters or, you know, where you can't really get in there and agitate things on your own. Whereas this, you can pretty easily just clean it by hand or get it good enough for who it's for. You know, really going into this much labor on a bike like this doesn't make a lot of economic sense in many cases. If you're doing it yourself, sure. Go get yourself a fork and have yourself a little Sunday project. And, uh, you know, I've been putting this aside because there's not a whole lot, not, not a real good way for me to make money on this bike after putting a new fork and spending all this time on it. It's late summer and things are slow at the shop and I can make money on the video, you know, it's nice. I have a, have a way to rescue these bikes now. This, these videos make it more economically feasible for me. Oh, dropped a seal. All right, so all of that stuff has been squirted and agitated. And again, 
re-squirt it and then take my somewhat filthy rag wipe things off a little bit you can see it's shiny now and like if you really wanna then you can take your your speed degreaser brake cleaner and just that has a little bit more i don't know what you call it force to it kind of blasts out all the last gunky bits gives it that final shine now the rag has a bunch of that stuff on it too right very shiny okay and now your semi-dirty rag is more dirtier and then a pretty clean rag here this one's all full of goof off and, and dawn power wash kind of dry it it's like doing the dishes where did my seal go oh there it is these seals like to get brittle and break this one's in good shape yet goes there goes this way though yeah so now we're gonna take our semi-clean rag with it still has some good degreaser on it you can load it up with a little bit more we'll go over and do the cups so that's all clean same thing underneath and some of you may know this, but uh, my grandmother used to eat a lot of prunes. And then we'd hear her from the bathroom singing her song. Wiping as we go, wiping as we go. When you eat like we do, we wipe as we go. Part of this is just wiping as we go. Every little bit you touch it, the cleaner it gets. And we'll polish back up. Ah. All right, I got this syringe I made for grease and it really doesn't work, but there's grease in it. So I'm doing it. It really wasn't a good idea. I mean, that actually worked pretty well, but man, that's a lot of grease. It's way more grease than you need. Put some underneath. This is the park tool grease. I used to buy blue marine grease, but then I found it easier to just order the park tool stuff. I get it through distribution. It's good stuff. One thing you need to pay attention to when you're doing fork is your steer tube. So right now I'm looking and I only, the new fork's steer tube is only like, I don't know, half inch or quarter inch longer than the old one. So I'm just gonna leave it and use another spacer. Otherwise, I gotta like jig it up and cut it. And I have a, a you know, you wanna use a, well, you can use a pipe cutter to get it nice and flat or level. Um, I use a saw guide. Um, it's not the end of the world, but you can skip that step if you're close enough. Okay, put the crown race on. Put it there, we have the crown race tool. Now, a lot of times you need an adapter. This one happens to fit good enough for who it's for, so we don't need an adapter. And then you have your star nut. Now these come with the headset, so the fork doesn't come with one. So I had to get this one out of the old one, which I did off camera, but you might have to buy one. I'm sure there are a dime a dozen on Amazon. Oh yeah, this is a star nut inserter tool. Now you can do that with just a bolt and get it in there, um, but it sure is a lot easier to use the, the park tool tool for it. 
probably not something you need, you know, unless you're doing it all the time like a bike shop. Anyway, that's all set and ready for installation. Okay, I uh, put the bearings and the grease and everything. The bearings, everything's greased. The cup is greased. We got grease everywhere. Grease, 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 grease. Okay, that all looks good. Same here. It is. Okay. Get this in there. I did add a spacer and we have the perfect amount of lip here. So I nailed that. Put the cap back on. Get it all together and it's binding. Okay, I thought there's something going on down here. I got something wrong down below. So this is all binding up. Something's not right. Try her again. That seal, I'm sure it's the seal. It's either backwards or in the wrong spot or something. It looked funny. Yeah, okay, so I had the seal going this way and it definitely wants to go that way. So just flip the seal around. There, ha! Huh. I mean, I saw it before, didn't do anything. Oh, dropped a spacer. Oh man, can I reach it? Yeah. Yeah, that feels way better. Very good. Very nice. Oh, dropped a wrench. So when I put the stem back on, I didn't consider these two cables, which go on the other side. So we're gonna undo what we've done. One more try, folks. There we go. You always know when a dad's been working on their kid's bike because the cables are routed off funny. Yeah, that's, that's wrong still. Wait, that one goes there. No, it was right. It's just a little goofy, just a little silly. Just kind of rubbing some of that grease that's on my hands into the bars. They're a little discolored. The spike's been left out in the sun, UV damage, but it comes back if you I don't know, I sprayed it before with the furniture polish, that'll soak in. But all that kind of revives the appearance of the bike. Okay, so now we get to put things back together. And we're gonna re-lube all these cables that are actually in good shape because they've been lubed once or twice before and everything inside the housing is bright and shiny. I'm gonna drop some lube. I've noticed the ferrules have a little bit of oxidation. This is a steel bike, so there's a little bit of surface rusting. You know, oxidation is a little more prevalent on these older steel bikes. It's not the end of the world. It's not like the frame's gonna rust out or anything, but a little bit of tri-flow, put an end to that for a while. At least slow the process. That's slick. Very slicker than snot on a doorknob. I'm back here doing the rear brake cable. The front brake cable, you just kind of got to use gravity, which seems to be a lot of gravity today. I've had three opes so far for those of you drinking at home. That's uh, three cups of Mad Dog 2020. I know what you drink. Gregor's my best friend. He's down here a lot with me. 
Just got back from vacation. I could tell he missed me. Um, well, okay. So this valve cap here is at an angle. And I don't like that. Well, either do customers. Nobody does. And it's hard to get it straight. So if I kind of work the tire all the way around and then try to just get it to move a little bit. All you need it to do is move a few millimeters a handful of times around the tire. Then that gets things back in line. And if you pull it out, kind of hold it with your finger and then get your chuck on there. Add your air. That's pretty good. Okay, the tire's not seated real well. There's a spot right here where the tire's not seated. I'm gonna let some air out. And then go to that spot and then find another poker tool. Let some air. Yeah, it's right in here. Okay, so the other trick, this is a really nice inflator, by the way, from Efficient Velo Tools. I have a link in the description. Um, it's not an affiliate link, I don't get paid, but they're a nice, small, made in America company that's doing the right thing by making tools that work great. Not that other tool manufacturers don't do that, but it's the best inflator on the market. It's very expensive. I love it. And yes, they gave it to me to say good things about it, but I actually mean it. Okay. Keep this tire. Now I don't really know why this happened, but I suspect that it this bike sat on the ground for a long time and then the air came out of the tires and then it just kind of got a mind of its own. There we go. Okay. Or maybe I did something when I went around it. Either way, this one seems to be giving me the fits a bit here. All right, so I've been putting 60 in. I'm just gonna go big or go home. So that's like 80, which is more than I usually put in a tire of this size and caliper. But I'm looking all the way around at the bead. It looks even all the way around on this side. Then I'll flip it and I'm doing the same thing. Yep, okay. So we're seated now. That valve stem is still a little crooked, but this is a really good way to break your valve stem too. I've done that and just had to go psh. Oh no, now we gotta replace the tube. Ooh, that's good and round though. Okay, we'll just call it a win. I'm flipping the wheel around only because I'm right-handed and I want to get back here to clean this hub. I do that by taking my semi-dirty rag, put my finger out like that, and it'll spray some stuff in there and get after it a little bit, which we will do right now. I'm going to go straight with the behold here. Um, you could use the Dawn Power Wash at this step too, but these are pretty clean and I used to only have pledge when I worked at the bike shop. I only have the furniture polish for cleaning and uh, it really does a good job all around. It you know, does a pretty decent job at degreasing and it's just a really nice cleaner and polisher. But yeah, I'm doing that finger trick with the rag. That's how I've been doing it for a million years. Kind of have it down to a science, I guess. A routine. It's like brushing your teeth. You know, do you really think about it every time? Huh? Do ya? Just get my finger in the hub there, just through the spokes. Just kind of clean out the cobwebs and the bird poop. Yeah, I got barn swallows in my carport. The carport's great. It's just a really nice addition to the property over here. Uh, gives me a nice place to work outside in the shade, store things, um, but the birds like it too. Yeah, here's some bird shit right there. And uh, I like to store bikes there. It's just a good spot to keep them out of the weather, but the birds don't really care where they poop. 
And, you know, I mean, if you believe in karma, I've kind of got it coming. I suppose. Being such a bad guy and everything. Man, these are true. I mean, really quite true. Not a whole lot of little adjustments to do. I usually don't go into detail on truing wheels in these videos. I think I do have some wheel build videos and here and there I'll give you a little close up. There's better bike mechanic instruction on YouTube than the bike farmer, that's for sure. I just kind of like show you how I work and try to create some content that's relaxing and halfway interesting to watch. As far as cleaning and truing and airing and whatevering, we're just going to repeat the process here for the front wheel. Hey bike farmers, a quick note. If you're looking to get serious about fixing bikes at home, look no further than the Park Tool AK5 Toolkit. I have an affiliate link in the description. This kit provides all the basic tools you'll need to tune up just about any of the bikes that you see on this channel. It also comes with the Big Blue Book of Bicycle Repair written by Calvin over at Park Tool. Also in the description are affiliate links for all the basic things that I use. The grease, the degreaser, the one step, the Dawn Power Wash, Behold. If you see anything else that I don't already have a link for, let me know in the comments so I can add it. I hope these affiliate links will help encourage you to take this on as a hobby or even start flipping bikes for a living like I do. I think I just finished up this wheel. All right, I'm gonna put the pads on these brakes before I get the wheels back on the bike just because there's a little more room for my hands. It's a little easier this way. There's a little trick. So I looked at the old pads and the wider spacer. There's two different size spacers here and uh, you're either going to have the skinny one or the wide one close to the pad. You can flip them around. It gives your, it positions your brakes. Um, I've explained that in other videos. But I just take off those spacers and washers just like that. Then I grab my grease brush with my fingers like that. I put a little grease on the threads. And then get my pad in there. Hopefully without dropping anything. You know, sorry for the drinkers, for the mad doggers out there. I've noticed here I, I didn't lube my brake pivots. But if you drop a little bit of lube down here behind your bolts and kind of wiggle, it gets tri-flow in those pivots. Man, does that make things work better. And then get back behind in the springs too. And I'll even lube the, here I'll show you on this side where you can actually see it, right? Get that cable out of the way. Just back in here and then I'll just lube a little bit on that linear spring. And that eliminates, pretty much eliminates any chance of squeaking. So here in the front ones, I have them off the bike. Okay, and we'll just put some grease in there, in there for these. And then I usually try to get a little bit of grease inside the holes for the threads. Okay. Just trying to get that. We may run into a little bit of trouble here. See, this spring just isn't really doing what I want it to do, but there's a lot of thread on that adjuster. Okay, we can work with that. Well, I tell you what, I don't know when I lost audio and I don't know why I struggle so much. I think it's the hardest part about making these videos is getting the audio right, especially with wireless mics and I don't know, I really struggle with it. So sorry about that again. 
All I was saying is that I really like it when the bikes get to this point where they start looking like bikes again, get a sense of accomplishment. And I was also saying that I think anyone who says that they don't like the Beatles is just being contrarian. I think it's objectively impossible to not like the Beatles. I mean, I can, like my favorite Beatles song is Helter Skelter, which I know is like not for everyone. Like most people, I don't know, would like love me do or whatever, you know, like, but not, I don't think you need to think they're the greatest thing ever. But I mean, even if you're just like a diehard, like metalhead or whatever, you can still like be like, okay, well, I don't, I'm not offended when I hear a Beatles song, you know, like it's not offensive. Like, it's not like you don't like it. It's just, you'd rather listen to something else maybe, I don't know. Anyway, it drives me crazy that people like would say that. I think you're just being contrarian. So there, that's what I was going off on. Anyway, I'm just putting these pedals on. Okay, so with these new pads, we're gonna need to let some cable out. Now, brake pads and brake toe and setting up brakes is a, a thing that seems to be hitting the comments a lot lately. Um, I did a video recently where I talked about brake howling and everybody said, well, if you just tow the brakes, they won't howl, which is definitely not true. I have um, towed brakes many, many times and still had howls. And again, I have also towed brakes many, many times and it has solved the problem. And yes, there are brake pads that are designed with little nubbins on them to automatically set tow. And some people say, oh, I just put a credit card behind the back of the pad and it's perfect. Or, um, you know, a penny or something else. Everybody's got their way to tow brakes. Now what tow does is it makes the front of the pad hit before the rear. In general, I don't tow my pads because I think it makes the brakes feel squishy and stupid and terrible. And I don't like how it makes the brakes feel. I like my brakes to be snappy and firm and decisive. That's just how it's always been. I like snappy brakes. The only, I, I go with a toe almost last resort when I'm battling, you know, the brake howls or brake squeals or anything. I just really want it to be the last thing. So I'm like setting these pads as flush as I can, as flush as I possibly can on this rim. And I do that just for brake feel. And if they howl, I'm, the next step I'll do is I'll sand down the rim a little bit and test ride. Uh, I'll put it in the granny gear and squeeze the brake lever and try to ride the squeal out. That helps sometimes. Sometimes it's just a humid day. Like today is like super hot and humid. So brakes are gonna howl today and where they wouldn't on a cooler day. Um, there's lots of factors involved. And it's not just simply towing pads. So you'll rarely see me do it on this channel. I'm usually able to get rim brakes to work great and not howl without having to tow the pads. I've had better luck that way. It's the way I've learned over the years. Um, if I'm able to do it and you're not, it's because I'm a superior man. And with proper lubrication and cleaning and setup, we don't really need to do much adjusting at all to these brakes. They just needed the pads replaced and set up properly. This right one seems to be not quite aligned, just exactly perfect. And it's a really simple little adjustment there. Ooh, baby. And I can, uh, I can already tell these are flush as flush can be and they're really working good. They feel great and they're not gonna squeak. I just know that, I can tell. Another thing I've been feeling is with these shifters, they're just not quite working right. So we're gonna flood the system with finish line one step. And just kind of wake things back up, reanimate the shifters. And I don't know what I just did, but now my brakes are really squishy. I'm guessing that this piece of housing might've been hung up, you know, like that or sometimes on your lever. And so I have to readjust. That's too bad because it was feeling super good. And I'm gonna have a weird, weird kink over here in my cable. Oh well. Okay, it's not weird. If it's your kink, it's fine. It doesn't have to be weird just because it's not my kink. Everybody's got their kink, except for Mike Pence. Mike Pence does not have any kinks. Kind of do the same over here. It's a little bit tricky to get 
one step into these shifters, this particular style of shifter. Hmm. Yeah, this one's really acting funny. Sometimes if you do this, it agitates things and Yeah, this is really acting funny. Not sure what to do about it. I think there's a pawl in there that's that's sticking. So when I have one that's really acting funny, I'll, I'll take the speed degreaser. It's a much more intense chemical. Like I said, it's hard to get it in the mechanism. Well, maybe we need to open her up. All right, let's do some surgery. Okay, so I think the problem is in the guts underneath here. So usually there's a dust cap of some sort. You can take that off with a little screwdriver here. Don't lose that screw. That's more than an ope. And then I have a sharpened spoke that I can use to find a pawl and move it if I need to. Yeah, it's really hard to get this on film, but I just look for things that looks, look like they want to move but might not be moving. Would we'll take apart the top too. But lets me really target where I spray. There's a, sp a spring and a, I don't know what you call it. It's an axle, I suppose. Um, but you know, something's moving here. And so if that grease gets old and crusty, you gotta clean it out. Okay, we're gonna leave that for now. And then flip her around and we'll take off this top cap. Again, be very careful to not lose these screws. I'm talking to myself. They like to bounce into the abyss. So now, here we are in the guts. Yeah, here's one. So this is a Paul, can you? I don't know if you can see. But if you just get at it and kind of flick it. Right? There's another one there. Okay, we can find this Paul. That one's moving freely. Okay, and then, yeah, now it's working. Fixed. So it's that complicated and that easy. Not all shifters are that easy. What I did there is I noticed I can see it over here. My indicator says I'm on the first gear, so I just shifted down into one, just so the indicator continues to work properly. Well, uh, Again, we're just gonna set these up as flush as we possibly can because we are engagement farmer and I'm hoping this will trigger comments, boost the algorithm, line my pockets, and I shall laugh my way to the bank, bike farmers. <laughs> okay, there's little to no brake tension. So I'm going to crank this side all the way in. Now there is some, that pad is crooked. Not anymore. Okay. Add a little tension to this side just to get these more balanced. Ooh, there's the sweet spot. Yowza, right in there. Yeah, that's the stuff, baby. Hide your wives, I've got the touch. Don't let them watch this, boys. They will leave you for me. Is that, I mean, wow. Just imagine the kind of hands that can do something like that. Imagine what else they could do, ladies. And in that vein, back here to the money shot. I know what you guys are into. Crispy shifting. So like I mentioned, this bike had been tuned up at Gibbs before. 
so and I haven't touched any cable tension or anything all I did is lube it so I'm gonna lube the chain my derail your pulleys my derail your pivots and then the pivots in the front and then with that one step you can just wipe off the excess and that's how I clean my chain you also won't hardly ever see me clean a drivetrain I just kind of spray and wipe and call it clean So one thing I was going out of this bike is the seats at a really weird angle. It's nose diving, ski sloping. Um, I always set them up neutral. I can move that out of the way. Um, I, I try to set them up neutral when I sell them and that gives us some adjustability one way or the other. But I always start just kind of neutral and I'm eyeballing it. It's kind of hard to see up on the stand, but um, I think I'm pretty close here. If it's wrong when I get it on the ground, I'll change it. All right, bike farmers. I feel like this frame can have a little more luster to it. One thing you can do is spray a little bit of furniture polish on there like I just did and then let it sit. And it just kind of soaks in and leaves a little bit of a waxy luster. Um, so I might do that with this bike. Just spray it and let it sit before I put it away. But um, I think we have ourselves a completed bike here. Um, everything's shifting, the brakes feel great with those new pads. Tires are all seated and ready to go and I'm futzing with this front derailleur cable and getting that out of the way that you guys can't see. And I'm talking like this for some weird reason and don't really know. Wiping as we go, wiping as we go. When you eat like we do. We are wiping as we go. That's my grandma's prune song that we would hear coming through the vents all over the house. And that little vent in the corner right across from the toilet. You know what I'm talking about. And there we have it. The Gary Fisher Mamba is done. Um, I think I'm going to take it off and ride it. This fork is questionable to me. It's considerably longer um, axle to crown a lot more travel on this fork. It's going to change the geometry of the bike. I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot for the next owner. Um, it'll be fine. It does change things a bit, but I think it's going to be acceptable. So let's find out. Well, one of the first things I noticed right away is the handlebars are on a little crooked. So I'll make that adjustment quick. There are a few things that come to light when you take the bike out of the stand. And we've had enough comments of people wanting me to show them a test ride afterwards. It's just getting that footage, like with an action cam and everything, is a whole lot more work than just using my camera on the tripod like this. So that's why I don't do it. Um, but it's not that big of a deal to bring this camera outside. And I can uh, ride this mountain bike through my garden here and kind of show you how this fork works. So yeah, these uh, cheapo forks really have a lot better action than the shitty one that came with the bike. All right. Let's go and see how it does. Yeah, this doesn't feel weird. It's fine. All right. There it is for you haters. Squeaky brakes. Now I will say, it is unusually warm and humid out today. It's one of those days in late August, it's 90 degrees and humid. In the granny gear, holding the brake, trying to ride the storm out here. It's only when you squeeze it really hard. So you gotta squeeze it pretty hard to get that squeak, but it's not acceptable. You gotta go fix that. So these brakes feel great. And they sound terrible. When we go through, you gotta remember too, we clean these rims with Behold Furniture Polish. And a lot of people yell at me for that too, because it's certainly gonna leave a film, right? Not like these gigantic, super high powered squeegees wouldn't just like squeegee and burn that shit right off. But whatever, people, you believe whatever you wanna believe. But this mechanically um, changes that super smooth surface and gives the new pad something to bet into, create a little inconsistency. 
maybe eliminate some of that, uh, what do you call it, harmonic imbalance or harmonic balance that creates that honking. It's also a very honk prone day with the tropical tundra outside. I just kind of give it one of these. Now we'll go try again. Ooh. Fixed. All right, kids. It needs a kickstand. I don't need to show you that. Thanks for watching till the end. That really is a wonderful way to support the channel. There are other ways. You can send a super thanks. That's money straight into my account. That's so good. Uh, monthly sustaining membership, five, 10 bucks a month. Man, that always feels good to be getting those. Uh, memberships rising. Um, I, I assume, I presume as the channel grows, that'll become a bigger thing in my life. Looking forward to getting to know some of you. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, and for yourself, don't forget to click that notification button so you and your bikes can stay tuned. <music>